Spirituality is so different for so many of us. Some find solace in a house of worship. Some look inward on their journeys. Some look up to the heavens. And some, like me, simply look outwards. Since childhood, in fact, some of my earliest, fondest, and greatest memories are of nature, forests, and wood. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Lori. And we are a cut above design. As a contractor, I had scraps of wood piling up all over the house. And I was getting subtle nags about what to do with it all and started combining them and making cutting boards of various shapes and sizes. Well, the high school was having a craft fair and uh, people had been telling us when we gave them as gifts that we should be able to sell these. So we decided to make a bunch and bring them to the craft fair and see what would happen. And people were giving us rave reviews and we sold all the boards that we brought that day. And that's when we decided that we could uh, make this more than an occasional hobby and really put some effort into becoming better craftspeople. The family being involved has been part of what makes it so special. Early on in, in the cut above, I, I was more involved just in the selling part and not in the creating. It took a few years for me to become more involved in the actual creating. And that was because our kids had gotten old enough to also be involved in the creating. It's just been so fun to be working as a family unit down here. Many times there have been four of us doing things in the shop at, at any given time, and that's priceless. Just getting rid of the bad edge. One of the things that I just love about doing this work, which I have to say, I never would have imagined that I would have been doing woodworking. I didn't grow up around a family of woodworkers, and so it's really been an adult learned skill. But wood not only has the color and the texture, but it's just an extremely sensory experience to work with wood. When it's being cut, it has uh, smell, different woods smell different, and you can't help but want to touch it. So as we're making and creating the boards, I often will have one piece and then I'll say, no, 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 I just don't like the way that one looks or feels next to the board next to it. And I swap it out back and forth, back and forth. It is sometimes an excruciating long experience to just create one board because I just keep trying different pieces until it just seems to feel like the woods flow together to create one piece that this is the way we want it to be. Yeah, it's like, I love using up all this stuff here. And trust me, we have scraps. <laughs> now, some of them may end up as kindling. I really just don't know what we're going to want to use. We got some pretty massive blocks of walnut already. And over there, sort these in here, kind of by size. It is much wider. This is one I got already. That may just have to be a small board on its own. There are wood candy stores all around New England. And if you want to go start picking through boards, the sky's the limit. There are purples and reds. There's so many delicious hardwoods out there for combining and cutting boards.
And then the process got so much more interesting once we had all these different colors and textures of wood because then it became much more of an artistic endeavor and figuring out how the different woods could combine different shapes. We've, we've experimented with curves and straight lines and combining different kinds of woods. Some woods we've discovered didn't work so well, but it's just been a really interesting experience to figure out what we consider is now the signature of a cut above, which is to have stripes that include many, many different kinds of exotic woods in one stripe within a cutting board. And that's really become sort of a signature piece of, of our line. Nine inches, so. If you don't want that, then I don't take it. Okay. I'm going to take this whole stack back over here. Slowly get larger. And at some point we'll add yeah, a I feel like, like it that. needs something in the middle there. Okay, let's add a little piece of something well, in the middle. I feel there. like, I don't know, the two maple well, together, the grain goes the opposite directions. And How's that? That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty. That's one to love. We'll set that aside. Sometimes it's frustrating when we're working in the shop and we're trying to get things sort of accomplished and I get stuck on one particular board that I just don't think is right. And I, I keep saying, no, we can't, we're not ready to glue this one up yet um, until it's right. I might need three for this one. I just two, but I've got some other ones. I love it. That's gonna work. I've always been impressed with mom and dad's passion for making things out of wood and especially the cutting boards. They've been to countless fairs around the state, and it's been so impressive to see their progression from simple cutting boards with simple species of wood to now the average cutting board that a cut above produces has about 12 species of wood in it. And people just look at the cutting boards and know that it's a top-notch piece of art. Don't need to be really careful with the full coverage. Okay, on. I'll get my clamps ready. This is a sweet little board. Good quality garbage. Our cutting boards are designed to be used day to day in the kitchen. 90% of them are two-sided, which means both sides can be used for a variety of uses. But they're functioning art. They're designed to be used, but they're also designed to spice your life up a little bit. So many people say that our boards are, quote, too beautiful to cut on, but we are meaning for them to be used. And I often we'll talk to people about how we deserve to have beautiful things that we use every day. And our boards will hold up just like plain cutting board that you buy, but wouldn't it be so much nicer to see this every day?
Many folks ask how long it takes for us to make one of our signature products. And the answer varies because there's collecting the wood at the various stores, there's letting it dry, there's the milling, the combining, the cutting, the regluing, the cutting, the regluing, the cutting, the regluing. And then of course there's the sanding and sanding and there's more sanding. And then at some point we even sand some more. But I would say on average, our boards are taking between 15 to 25 hours per board to make. When you think about how much time that is, that's a lot of interaction with that one piece of wood. When that board then goes off to someone else's home, it's wonderful and I'm delighted and that's the end goal of a cut above design. But a little piece of me goes home with that client as well. One thing that I really admire about mom in particular is she had no woodworking experience up until A Cut Above really started. And she's grown so much as a turner and as a woodworker. And it's really impressive to see how she keeps pushing those boundaries and how much she enjoys what she's doing. In terms of dad, I'm always amazed by how his cutting boards keep evolving. I thought when the company started that those boards were incredible, but compared to now, I feel like he's just expanded his range so much and he's really discovered so many new ways to show off the beauty of the wood. Oh, no watch. Look at that. So much of my enjoyment and what keeps me going with the cut of a design are the relationships with other people I've formed along the way. Attending shows allows us to display our products and potentially make some sales, but it always comes back to individuals, sharing stories of common projects, hearing about cutting boards from olden days, smiling the smile and talking the talk. At the end of the day, the customer may leave with a beautiful heirloom but I leave having made a new friend. Yeah, just the contrast. It's just comes out so much more once we put this on. Having experienced much of what nature has to offer, I cannot help but feel closely connected to every board that passes through my shop. There is a spirituality in wood, an almost living entity that cries out for its true shape and purpose. It is with that in mind that I, along with tons of help from my family, combine my peace, my medium, and my time, and, hopefully, at the end of the day, I've gotten it all mostly correct, and the finished project completes the circle between the birth of the tree and the beauty now exposed within.